Welcome back to the channel. This week's episode, we're going to be focusing on eczema, or atopic eczema to be succinct. It's probably the most common dermatological condition we are presented with in our practice, with it affecting about 30% of children and almost 10% of adults, with almost 90% of cases presenting before the age of 5, although up to 30% of people first develop their symptoms as adults. There is also some environmental factors at play, with atopic eczema associated with urban areas, smaller families, as well as higher socioeconomic classes. But by definition, atopic eczema is a chronic, itchy and inflammatory condition that arrives in episodes of flare-ups and periods of remission. It's closely related to other immune or allergic conditions such as asthma or hay fever, and hence the term atopic, but more on this later. There is no single known cause of atopic eczema, but there is thought to be a wide range of factors at play, including genetic, immunological and environmental factors, causing a dysfunction at the skin barrier and an altered localised immune dysfunction. This is important to remember as it's incredibly frustrating to our patients, as well as ourselves when managing atopic eczema, particularly difficult ones. Some key functions of the skin is to restrict water loss and prevent external entry of irritants, allergens and skin pathogens. Thus, any dysfunction in the skin causes water loss and hence dry and itchy skin. This also causes a susceptibility to allergens such as house dust mites or pollen or certain foods. This gives way to an IgE immunological response. Any skin dysfunction can also predispose the skin to infections, such as staphylococcal or herpetic. Although not commonly used, there is a nice recommended criteria for diagnosis for atopic eczema that includes an itchy skin condition and at least three of flexural eczema, visible dermatitis, dry skin within the last 12 months, atopic history, or onset of symptoms before the age of two. Severity of eczema is clarified as such. Mild, if there are areas of dry skin with itching and redness. Moderate, if there are frequent areas of dry skin, redness, and itching with localised thickening. Severe, if the above is widespread and incessant with or without excoriation, thickening, or oozing and infected if the eczema is weeping, crusted or pustular. Management in adults. This is the crux of what you need to know for your exam. Patients should be advised to avoid any triggers, whether it's irritant clothing, chemicals, allergens or climates as much as possible. For patients with mild eczema, patients should be advised to use a generous amount of emollients with consideration for a mild topical corticosteroid for affected areas for at least 48 hours. In moderate eczema, emollients and trigger avoidance is continued with the consideration of a moderately potent topical corticosteroid and for areas of fragility such as a face or flexures, NICE recommend no more than 5 days use. Antihistamines could also be considered if there's an itch. You could also consider a step down maintenance therapy here if required. If the patient has severe eczema, Admission to hospital might need to be considered if there are erythrodermic patients or if there's a widespread infection or even eczema hepaticum. Liberal use of emollients is recommended with potent topical steroids used for inflamed areas, ideally at a maximum for five days. Sometimes, occlusive dressings or dry bandaging can also be used. We should also touch on the potency of steroids or topical corticosteroids. There's quite a few to remember, but in simple terms, we've outlined these in a table below. In regards to secondary care, routine dermatological treatment can be considered in patients who have an uncertain diagnosis, not being able to be managed in primary care, facial eczema that isn't responding, recurrent secondary infections, if there's any consideration of contact allergic dermatitis, or if further psychological support is needed. Specialists can prescribe topical calcineurin inhibitors like tacrolimus, consider phototherapy and immunosuppressants if needed, with newer biological drugs such as dupilumab also being considered. Well that's that, that's a detailed overview of atopic eczema. We hope you've enjoyed the video and head over to our Instagram and Facebook pages for more revision content for your AKT. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos, but otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.